trappers would set up their traps and they'd stick their hands in them and show, look, no broken fingers, you know. They may get a little bruise, that's about it. Modern snares are, are very humane. Um, Cona bears, uh, you know, body grip traps like you use with beavers and such. It's essentially a big mouse trap. It's an instant kill trap. There, the, the myths that these leftist morons have spread against trapping that has essentially killed the fur industry. Uh, that that's a tradition where I live, fur trapping, and it's dead. You can't. I mean, you could have the most beautiful pelts, and you're not going to get anything for them. Uh, that used to be a way a man put food on his table in the winter time, you know. And the meat, the meat is really good. I mean, as an as an omnivore, as a sportsman, um, and, and as a, a prepper, I want to make sure I have access to, you know, small game through throughout the. I mean, yeah, you can go out and hunt a deer, but you know, if the things get bad, everybody's going out to hunt a deer, hunt a deer. How many people do you think are going out beaver trapping? And beaver is excellent meat, good red meat. It's like grass fed beef. Plus, you get a very valuable, useful pelt that can be used to make clothing, blankets. Uh, I mean, come on. We have to really take back our God-given rights. This country was founded on fur trapping. So I'm going to challenge you today, and I'm going to spread this to your friends. I want everyone to begin posting the statement, be anti-woke, wear fur, and wear fur boldly. And um, if you got a, you know what, if you if you go out with a fur coat and a MAGA cap, send me a picture of it, because I want to see that. <laughs> Absolutely, I want to see that. Let's uh, let's make America great again by making um, America a nation of sportsmen again, of outdoorsmen. I don't even like the term sportsman. I don't hunt for sport. I hunt for meat. So let's uh, let's get away from this idea of sportsman. Let's get back to this idea of self sufficiency and resiliency, and um, you know. Being a man in the woods, you know, cut cut a tree, build a fire, carve something, kill an animal, eat it. That's what men do. Uh, it's a much more uh, healthy pastime than, I don't know, sitting around playing computer games and taking fentanyl, which is what men seem to be doing these days. So, y'all, <laughs> let's stand up and be bold. Be anti-woke, comma, wear fur. I want to see that everywhere. If you, you know, if you agree with me. If you don't, you know, yeah, whatever. Um. You have the right to your opinion as well. But I think that fur trapping needs to be uh, reinvigorated and celebrated. It also helps keep you know populations of predators in check so things work a little bit better. You know, I mean, we've taken up a whole lot of the critter's environment by house building and urban sprawl and all that. And um, man is steward. Man has to regulate the populations of animals, both wild and domestic. Um a very good example is raccoons when the, a big rabies uh, epidemic just spreads through their whole population. If you're out trapping, um, well, one, you're going to identify that there's rabies in, in, this, in the raccoon population sooner, but you're also reducing that population, and the, the healthier, stronger animals are the ones that usually um, will survive. It's survival of the fittest, and, you know, it, it, diseases don't spread quite as badly. So anyway, and, and you know, people think of now as a raccoon as a nuisance. Raccoon used to be a valuable pelt, and actually, as long as they're eating clean, a very nice meal. Barbecued uh, raccoon is actually really good, so long as they haven't been raiding dump, uh, dumpsters and trash cans. Same is true with possums. Um, I mean, yeah, possum's good meat if it's been eaten clean. Believe it or not, if you like pork, you like possum. It's, you know, anyway. Y'all have a good one. I'll talk to you next week, and hopefully I'll remember what day of the week to do it next time. <laughs> the information in this podcast is not intended to diagnose or treat any disease or condition. Nothing I say or write has been evaluated or approved by the FDA. I'm not a doctor. The U.S. government does not recognize the practice of herbal medicine, and there is no governing body regulating herbalists. Therefore, I'm really just a guy who studies herbs. I'm not offering any advice. I won't even claim that anything I write or say is accurate or true. I can tell you what herbs have been traditionally used for. I can tell you my own experience and if I believe in herbs help me. I cannot nor would I tell you to do the same. If you use an herb anyone recommends, you are treating yourself. 
You take full responsibility for your health. Humans are individuals and no two are identical. What works for me may not work for you. You may have an allergy, a sensitivity, an underlying condition that no one else even shares and you don't even know about. Be careful with your health. By continuing to listen to my podcast or read my blog, you agree to be responsible for yourself, do your own research, make your own choices, and not to blame me for anything ever.